DJ Flip or DJ Flop? What's the verdict on this drone? After 14 weeks of testing this drone, both abroad and in the UK, I've come to these conclusions. Let's look at the strengths of the Flip first. Well, the main strength of this drone is the camera. It's the same camera as you get on the Mini 4 and the Mini 3 Pro. Slightly different dynamic range, but the same camera. It's also really good for tracking and subject scanning. So take a look at this now with me out in the field. Let's have a look at uh, pressing the left hand button up above here, where I'm on the, you just see I'm here now. If I press this button here on the left, you'll see that I'm, it now starts to switch it on, focus track enabled, subject scanning. You see there's a target on me. If I click on that target now, click on it, click on the target so it's picked me up, you'll see there's a box around me. And on that box is a little person at the bottom. And if I stay in spotlight mode and I move around here now, if I go this way, you see the drone will just turn and follow me. And the thing about Spotlight, which is really good, it picks it up so uh, I push the drone up, I can go up a little bit. I pull it across, I can pull it over there, and it'll stay on me. Now, if I walk over here now towards the camera, the other camera, you'll see the drone turns around and follows me. So that's subject scanning. And if I want to kill it, I just press the pause button on the controller twice, and it kills it. Now, if I switch off subject scanning again which is that button at the top left it's now gone off i can do the same thing to pick me up by drawing a box around me so there you see i've drawn a green box around me it's now picked me up i can now do the same thing and if i walk around now it's got me again this is the subject scanning but you can do it by drawing a box it has active track as well so if i now go into active track and, and i press active track the drone will and start the drone will now if I press active track it should now follow me. Well, so come over to here, you'll see the drone will should follow me. So now moving around, if I drop it down, I pull it back using the sticks, I can change the follow me. If I take it back a little bit more, now if I go over here now, come this way, it should follow me. And then if I go for point of interest, if I kill that now, we press the board button twice, I'll draw a box around me again, and this time I will now go for point of interest, POI. Pull the stick slightly that way, and the drone should just go around me. If I come over here, it'll move, and you'll see the point of interest will go around me, if I stay here now, it'll go all the way around and just carry on going around. So this is what's really good about this drone. The active tracking, point of interest, spotlight are all instantaneous and the infrared sensor on the front working with the camera is really, really good. The next thing about this drone, really positive stuff about this drone, is the fold away design, which is pretty unique and new to DJI. It folds away really easily and opens easily and you can set a switch within the software so as you fold it in it switches itself off and as you fold it out it switches itself on so for a really quick deployment it switches on and off really well the next thing about this drone which is really good is that it's easy to hand land and to take off from your hand let's take a look in the field now at me doing this take off and landing with my hand. If I hold my hand out of 30 centimetres below the hook, it'll just come down and it switches off automatically. Within a second of it landing on my hand, it switched the, the my arms off. If I start it off again, now, take off, take off, now. So it goes up about just half a metre and this couldn't be easier. Can take off and landing is really simple with this drone. The final thing about this drone is the price. 
If you buy the basic controller with the drone on its own, it's £369. That's where it starts at. There is actually no combo pack with this smaller uh, basic controller, but with the bigger controller, i.e. the inbuilt controller with the inbuilt screen, there is a combo pack, but the price jumps to £659. Now when you get to that sort of money, £659, you're getting into the Mini 4 Pro money, which is really the benchmark for any drone under 250 grams. And the price of the Mini 4 Pro is about 880 at the moment, so probably for another 220, 230 pound, you can get a Mini 4 Pro, which is a much better drone than this. So looking at, let's look at the flop side of this. Let's look at the flop side. The problem with this is it's not good in the wind. It's supposed to be ranked exactly the same as the Mini 3 and the Mini 4 for wind, but it's not. This buffets around crazy in the wind because it's got the prop guards on and they act like sails and it is not as good in the wind as either of the Mini 3 or the Mini 4. Here's what it's like in mild wind. Just filming it now. It's not bouncing around a lot. This is very light wind. One, three or four miles an hour maximum. You can see how it's moving around in the wind. Not as stable as it should be at all. I come underneath it now and you see it buffeting around a bit. You can start to see it. Here's a little bit more gusts now. The second thing is it's painfully slow. Maximum speed on just over 10, 12 mile an hour. And so it doesn't track vehicles. It'll track a person. Let's just take a look at that tracking now of me being tracked. And let's take a look at it not picking up a vehicle, but not picking up my car. It's, so it won't vehicle track and it struggles to stay up with even a bike. Well, so come over to here, you'll see the drone should follow me. So now moving around, if I drop it down, I pull it back using the sticks, I can change the follow me. If I take it back a little bit more, now if I go over here now, come this way, it should follow me. The next thing, major problem with this drone is it has gimmicky quick shots which can work just on your phone so you can connect your phone to the drone here without using a controller. Now the maximum distance that's supposed to work to is 50 meters laterally, 30 meters high. The maximum distance I've managed to get is 25 to 30 meters laterally. So it's not an, even a worthwhile effort. But also it's got using the drone without any control or any phone control using the um, scrolling through the menus on the front. So let's go through those again. So follow was the first one. Drony. exactly like the Neo. But again, this is limited to distances and it's really a gimmick, so I don't think this is worthwhile at all. In fact, I think it's just a hindrance, this mode, uh, uh, to use the drone on its own without the controller. Why use it with a controller when the only way you can buy it is with a controller? It makes no sense to me at all. Now, the battery life on, the, on, the, on this drone is supposed to be 31 minutes. The battery life on the Mini 3 and the Mini 4 is 34 minutes and it's pretty good. But this is well down. It's 23, 24, 25 outside. They must have recorded the battery life of 31 minutes indoors. The next thing you'll see with this drone, let's go have another look outside, is the noise. It's very noisy.
far more noisy than the Mini 3 and the Mini 4 Pro. There's no real comparison, so that's a flop side. And the final thing that I find really distressing on this is the collision avoidance on the front. The maximum distance it'll, um, it starts to kick in at is about two to three meters, and it'll stop at one meter. And sometimes it doesn't work, so it's hit and miss, pardon the pun. It really is hit and miss, the collision avoidance. I've found it sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. I don't think it's very good at all. It's supposed to be um, infrared collision avoidance. The actual combined using the, the infrared sensor and the camera for the um, tracking is brilliant. It really works well, but using this for collision avoidance doesn't seem to work well. And you can see the couple of examples now. So we'll come in here. Here's the, you can see the, you can see these here. I'm going to push this into the tree. It'll allow it to go. See how close that gets? Dangerously close. If I come towards me a bit over here, try and get close to this now. See how close that's al it's allowed to go to those, bu those bushes. If I come over here a bit more, Look how close that's getting now. Dangerously close. I'm literally a hand away. That is not collision avoidance, in my opinion. So it is working, but if I push it fast into that, now watch. It is stopping, bleeping. See how, I mean, I'm on the bush, so that's what I mean by collision avoidance, hit and miss. It's just not good enough. It genuinely isn't good enough. So in conclusion, my gut feel about this after 14 weeks of flying in all sorts of conditions is it's more of a flop than it is a flip. So my verdict is flop rather than flip. If you're going to spend the money at £650 upwards, I think it's worth going for the Mini 4 Pro, which is the benchmark drone. Go for another couple of hundred pounds, or buy a Mini 3 Pro second hand for about the same money. I hope that helps. That's my verdict. Bye for now. Happy flying.